Well, the prayer is simple. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, meaning that by the sign of the cross, we are calling uh, upon us the, the, uh, the grace, the, um, the presence, and uh, the life of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and uh, that the life of the Trinity may accompany this meeting and uh, uh, also be so to speak, the starting point, the constant starting point of our priestly ministry. And of course, we ask Mother Mary, Mother of the Church, our personal mother, to be with us and to intercede for us what we need uh, for us. And since we represent the Church, for what the Church and the whole world is in need in this present time. And grateful for the blessing of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and the intercession of Mother Mary, I offer you my, um, my uh, little uh, uh, so reflection, um, uh, points that also um, nourished my, uh, my life in this time. My dear brothers and sisters, my dear brothers, priests, I am very happy to extend the heartfelt and fraternal greetings to you at the beginning of this meeting. Even though it takes place in a virtual format, I pray and hope that your gathering will be accompanied by the presence of the Lord, bestowing, bestowing his grace in whatever way each of us needs in order to live out our ministry well in the course of these difficult circumstances triggered by the COVID-19 epidemic. So three little points. The first one, we do not know how long this pandemic will be with us. During this painful time, I think that many of us, all of us, have asked ourselves some questions. One that I personally said before me, before myself is this. Could it be that Jesus, the good shepherd, is using this time to speak to us, to make himself known even more? We believe that we know him, but are we sure that we really know him? As priests, are we really aware of the trust that he has in us by calling us to the priesthood? And I like to recall to this regard the words of Pope Benedict XVI. He says, the priest is not a mere office holder, like those which every society needs in order to carry out certain functions. Instead, he, the priest, does not something which that does, does something which no human being can do of his own power. In Christ's name. He speaks the words which absolve us of our sins. And in this way, he changes, starting with God, our entire life. Over the offerings of bread and wine, he, the priest, speaks Christ's words of thanksgiving, which are words of transubstantiation, words which make Christ himself present, the reason one, his body and blood, words which thus transform the element of the world, which open the world to God and unite with him. The priesthood, 
then is not simply office, but sacrament. That means an effective sign of grace, of the life of God. God makes use of us, poor men, in order to be through us, present to all men and women, and to act on their behalf. This audacity of God, who entrusts himself to human beings, who, conscious of our weaknesses, nevertheless considers men capable of acting and being present in his stead, this audacity of God is a true grandeur conceived in the world priesthood. Friends, allow me to express myself in simple, in more simple words. With our priestly ordination, it is as if Jesus told us, Luigi, John, Peter, Michael, what I did, now do it yourself. I give you everything you need, and I am with you so that you always acting in communion with the church. And therefore, in the name of the church, what I have done, you also can do. I said in communion with the church. Never forget this. In fact, as our Magna Carta, the great charter, Christo Pastores Davovis, given to us by St. Paul, by St. Paul II, reminds us, the ordained ministry, our priesthood, our priestly ministry, has a radical communitarian form and can only be carried out, carried out as a collective work. Number 17 by and continues by its very nature the ordained ministry can be carried out only to the extent that the priest is united to christ to true sacramental participation in the priestly order and thus to the extent that he is in hierarchical communion with his own bishop, not only with his own bishop, but with all his, our brothers in the priesthood. So this first reflection, you know, an invitation to realize more the incredible trust and gift, the incredible audacity of Jesus in calling us and in entrusting to us the sacrament of priesthood. Second reflection. I said before that a priestly ordination is like if Jesus tells, tell, told us, what I did now, do you yourself. What did Jesus do? I asked myself. We, remind, we remember that to the vast crowd of people troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd, Jesus, with his heart moved with pity, first offers the gift of, the, of his word. And he began to teach them many things. And then pours out the gift of himself, the Eucharist. Jesus, who gives himself, in the world and in the Eucharist is the image of the Good Shepherd who gives himself. Is the image of the, of the church that gives himself. Is the image of the church that goes forth towards the existential peripheries. Is the image of the pastor and of the church who do not live for themselves, but for humanity to love, to serve, to save humanity. These beautiful words of Pope Francis saying, this 
is the task of the church. The church exists, only exists, to keep alive in people's heart the memory and the experience that God loves them. It exists to tell everyone, even those farther, farther away, God does not forget you. He cares about you. Even in the storm, in your storms, he is with you. But, but how? How can we love and serve humanity today? This is always this question, how? How can I really intercept the, the demands, the needs? I say, we will be able to know how to serve humanity if we ask, if we ask. If we do as Jesus did when he asked Bartimaeus, that blind man, what do you want me to do for you? Is a question of asking our brothers and sisters. Too often, sometimes, we simply speak to them and do not listen, ask to them. We, it's a question of asking our brothers and sisters, tell me, how can I love you? How can I serve you? How can I help you? Also, Pope Francis, in his last uh, encyclical, uh, Fratelli Tutti, uh, speaks about this necessity of listening. He says, today's world is largely a dead, a deaf world. At times, the frantic pace of the modern world prevent us from listening attentively to what another person is saying. We must not lose the ability to listen. St. Francis heard the voice of God. He heard the voice of the poor. He heard the voice of the infirm, and he heard the voice of the nature. He made of them a way of life. And for Francis to conclude, my desire is that the seed that St. Francis planted may grow in the hearts of many. Always, but especially in this time of great pastoral, social, and moral difficulties, the first act to be lived, to be put into practice by those who want to be, who want to be close to the people are not planning or doing, but listening and connecting. That is welcoming the deep need of the people, understanding their suffering, understanding and recognizing its meaning using appropriate inter inter interpretative categories, and then integrating it into our life of, evangelization, of evangelization's activities, thus making it an opportunity for global growth. In this way, we see it is an undertaking, and I repeat, coming to the first point, it is an undertaking to be conducted in the plural, in the plural, that is, to gather how we must to learn more and more to do this, to gather, done in communion, in order to generate communion, done, done in communion, in order to generate communion. Finally, and the third point, in this present condition of apparent ministerial stasis, the world seems that everything is stalled, the power of intercession 
must be rediscovered. The figure of Moses on the mountain must be central in our days. Victory is obtained by the raised hands of the man of God on a hill in an elevated but isolated position while the battle is fought on the plain at a great distance. We too, in these days, are crossing the desert. Yet we must be confident that it is precisely within the desert, this desert, and in our poverty that God speaks to us and manifests himself to us. In particular, I urge you to embark on this prayer of intercession to gather in communion with one another, even if physically distant, since we are sure that the Lord listen, listens to what we ask when we are united in his name. I too accompany you with my prayerful closeness. It is with gratitude that I greet you with the words of St. Paul. I thank you, my God, every time I remember you, every time I remember you, always praying with joy for you in all my prayers. And uh, in this communion of prayer, in this communion of uh, this prayer of intersection, I greet you, I remain with you, and please, I also ask you, do not forget to pray for me. And uh, let me also uh, extend uh, to each one of you, uh, uh, in the name of Pope Francis, his apostolic blessing, blessing you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And my best wishes to the Canadian Federation of Presbyteral Council. Ciao.